hi now we are going to go through the final video for the topic of combustion chamber at this stage you should be able to view all the videos that are related to the combustion chamber as a reminder we have already looked at the introduction or the overview, combustion process, fuel supply, types of combustion chamber, and for this video, we will look into combustion chamber performance as well as the materials of construction. Now, let us focus on the performance. There are four elements of performance of a combustion chamber it is about the intensity of the combustion the efficiency of combustion the stability of combustion and the emissions right the first one the combustion intensity the heat released by a combustion chamber or any other heat generating unit is dependent on the volume of the combustion area. Thus, to obtain the required high power output, a comparatively small and compact gas turbine combustion chamber must release heat at exceptionally high rates. So you want a small and a compact gas turbine engine. For example, at takeoff conditions, a Rolls-Royce RB211524 engine will consume approximately 20,000 pounds of fuel per hour. The fuel has a calorific value of approximately 18,500 BTU per pound. Therefore, the combustion chamber releases nearly 106,000 BTU per second. Expressed in other way, this is an expenditure of potential heat at a rate equivalent to approximately 150,000 horsepower. Now, the second aspect of performance is about combustion efficiency. The combustion efficiency of most gas turbine engines at sea level takeoff condition is almost 100% and it will reduce to 98% at altitude of cruise condition. So roughly about there is about 98%. And uh, you, we normally use this particular chart to predict in terms of the combustion efficiency at the operating range. And this chart also look into the overall air fuel ratio. The third one is combustion stability. The combustion stability means smooth burning and the ability of the flame to remain alight over a wide range of operation. For any particular type of combustion chamber, there is both rich and weak limit to the air fuel ratio beyond which the flame is extinguished. And extinction is also most likely to occur in flight during a glide or dive with the engine idling. When there is a high airflow going into the combustion chamber where only small fuel are flowing. The range of air fuel ratio between the rich and weak limits is reduced with an increase of air velocity okay so you have higher air velocity it will then alter the reach as well as the weak limits and if the air mass flow is increased of air velocity and if the air mass flow is increased beyond certain value definitely flame extinction will occur the operating range defined by the stability loop must obviously cover the air fuel ratio and mass flow of the combustion chamber. 
So if we look another for another chart, figure 411 here, which shows the combustion stability limits where we have the stable region. We have the stable region where the reach limit and the weak limit indicated uh, with regards to the air fuel ratio. So the ignition process has weak and rich limits similar to be, to be shown here and the ignition loop however lies within the stability loop since it is more difficult to establish combustion under cold condition than to maintain normal burning so it is being plot against the increasing air mass flow the last one on the performance is about emissions the unwanted pollutants which are found in the exhaust gases are created within the combustion chamber right so there are four main pollutants here which are legislatively controlled first is the unburned hydrocarbons the smoke the carbon particles carbon monoxide which is the co and oxide of nitrogen which is no X. Okay. The principal conditions which affect the formation of pollutants are pressure, temperature, and time, in which few rich regions of the primary zones, the hydrocarbons are converted into carbon monoxide and smoke. Fresh, fresh dilution air can be used to oxidize the carbon monoxide within the dilution zone. That's why air being supplied in the dilution zone in the respective combustion chamber section. The unburned hydrocarbons can also be reduced in this zone by continuing the combustion process. So you can reduce the unburned hydrocarbon or the HC right, by continuing the combustion process. Oxides of nitrogen are formed, the NOx, under the same condition as those required for the suppression of other pollutants. Therefore, it is de desirable to cool the flame as quickly as possible and to reduce the time available for combustion. Now, we move into the last part of combustion chamber, which is the material. With regard to the materials, the containing wall and internal parts of the combustion chamber must be capable of resisting the very high temperature in the primary zone. Remember, it's about 1800 degrees Celsius to 2100 degrees Celsius. In practice, this is achieved by using the best resisting materials available. The use of high heat resistant coatings as well as using cooling method on the inner wall of the flame tube as an insulation from the flame. The combustion chamber must also withstand corrosion due to the products of the combustion, creep failure due to the temperature gradients and fatigue due to vibrational stresses. Okay, that's all for now for the combustion chamber topic. We will now continue on the following topic on turbine. Thank you very much and have, have a good day. Bye-bye.